first of all, welcoming you to, uh, to these uh, seminars that we are running in this uh, EAD PhD course in design. Let's it will start. be on your side, so I think it will be great having you with us for these 60 minutes and, uh, and making your presentation. And then we will have questions from, from the audience by I can see the what, 30 minutes. Uh, uh, if you have some problems, uh, so in, uh, um, in, in, uh, in the presentation mode, uh, so if I stop, or I'm, 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 there is no feedback for me, so if you have I will tell you. I will let you know. In case that we are we have uh, having problems, I will let you know immediately. Don't worry. Perfect. So let's start. So now it's perfect. I will hand over this to you now. Let's start. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone and uh, welcome. Uh, good evening to everyone. My name is Francesco Zuro. So we will we'll start to discuss about you know the contribution of design thinking to exp expand engagement and create confidence within the organizations. Just to few words about me. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an architect. I study architecture. This is my background. Then later on, uh, um, uh, I went to Milan. So because I, I studied in Rome and then I went to Milan to, 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 did, to, to do my uh, PhD uh, with Ezio Manzini, uh, a scholar, uh, you know, uh, one of the first, uh, let's say, scholar uh, uh, facing uh, sustainable issues in Milan and then later on so uh, going to explore uh, new fields of design like service design or on strategic design, design for social innovation and so on. Um, uh, I'm the deputy dean of the School of Design and mm, uh, in the re recent mm, times I become, I became the the chairman of Polydesign is on our private consortium. So, um, you know, uh, we, we, we started a uh, few years ago uh, a research center in the Department of Design called uh, CI Lab, that means uh, Creative Industries Lab. So we do research on, on uh, creative industries. Uh, as you can see, there is a beautiful image uh, a beautiful, beautiful picture of a Greek-like country, uh, a Greek-like village coming from the southern side of Italy. Because I'm from this uh, this side of Italy, so the southern side. This is um, the, the the name of this city is Ostuni. I came from this uh, small city, and uh, you know I'm used to 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 participate in applied research activities. Uh, with many corporations and companies uh, coming from different sectors and so even small medium enterprises uh, and so on so uh, with with a strategic design approach uh, i'm in the scientific committee of the observatory of design thinking for business of polytechnic di milano and this is an observatory of the our management engineering school uh, department and uh, so we started the collaboration now with our you know, managers, but coming from the engineering sciences, so expert in processes in design management. And so we focused uh, with this observatory about, you know, the diffusion and uh, absorption of design thinking within the organizations. Um, uh, so we, we explore many uh, possibilities of design thinking. And so you can see this, uh, this presentation that's related to the research that we have uh, done in the last few months about uh, the, the importance of design thinking with, within the organization. So let's start about you know, the contents of this webinar. Uh, you know, let's say that design thinking is, uh, you know, the new buzzword. You find a lot of uh, people, scholars, uh, you know, uh, scientific or professional arenas uh, discussing about design thinking. From my point of view, this is the latest social technology that companies and organizations can use within the organizations in order, in order to uh, face, let's say, complex problems related to uh, innovation processes. And, uh, you know, the, the idea um that we want to explore to today uh, tonight with you is uh, uh, the idea that uh, the design thinking is also a way to increase uh, the uh, performances uh, of organizations and linking creative confidence that you know one of the expressions of design thinking with organizational uh, culture 
and uh, I want to show you different models of adoption of design thinking. Uh, my idea is showing how design is affecting, let's say, the human resources departments and playing uh, a very important role in order to create occasions, uh, situations, uh, artifacts in order to uh, engage employees uh, in, the, in the organizational life. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, we had some questions um, this webinar aims to answer. The first one is about how can, uh, how can design thinking be transformed, uh, not just uh, using a set of tools and, and methodologies, but uh, using design thinking as uh, an essential uh, component of the corporate culture. You know, maybe uh, you are studying design, no? you, you know that there is a specific phenomenon that I call toolism, so uh, too many tools uh, uh, to be applied uh, to uh, face problems uh, within the organization, so, you know, for uh, innovation processes and so on. Uh, or let's say uh, there is another, another big, uh, big problem today, and I call this problem the latestism, so using the latest tools and methodologies uh, to face uh, uh, innovation problems. Uh, and uh, my idea is that design thinking um, has to become uh, uh, an essential part uh, of the corporate culture if uh, this, uh, this approach could really work within the organization. So my idea is also showing uh, uh, what are the different processes, uh, what are the benefits related to the adoption of design thinking within, within the organizations, and even uh, uh, discussing with you about the enables uh, and barriers in these adoption processes. And then uh, maybe going a little bit in depth uh, in uh, analyzing what pandemic uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, created uh, in organizations uh, when uh, people uh, they are not in the same place and so they use an hybrid way to uh, to collaborate and so to to work and so on also and uh, you know uh, we talk a lot about this idea of real of smart working but this is not really a smart working this is a kind of a simulacrum of smart working because we are obliged to 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 stay at home and working at home. So we, we need to consider what, what's the impact and so what could be the contribution of design thinking in this situation. So design for human resources, design supporting human resources. And this is related, let's say, <clears throat> to the evolution of design. No? So you can see uh, these uh, synthetic images, uh, diagrams by Richard Buchanan uh, a scholar cam, coming from Carnegie Mellon uh, School of Design, um, one of the editors of uh, Design Issues, uh, MIT Press uh, uh, magazine, very important uh, for, uh, for our uh, scientific field. Uh, and he wrote a very interesting uh, article about the contribution of design in the uh, corporate culture. Uh, published by Shijie. Shijie is, uh, is a magazine. Uh, I suggest you to to check uh, this, this this magazine and to uh, to read the contribution of this uh, magazine. Uh, this magazine is um, edited by uh, on, on, uh, Tongji University, and the, uh, the the director is uh, Ken Friedman, uh, an eminent scholar in, for for design science. And uh, uh, Bukchan uh, did a, a kind of, um, uh, of overview about uh, the, the, the link between design, strategic design, and uh, cultural uh, um, uh, corporate uh, uh, um, issues. Um, so you can see the evolution of design, and you can see different fields of design problems and different arts of design thinking. You know? So starting from symbols for graphic design, uh, inventing, uh, you know, proposing uh, new signs uh, to, to, to tell some, uh, some things uh, to a specific audience, to a specific target, uh, the judging art of design thinking for constructing things, so I mean physical objects, 
this idea of connecting with interactions in order to provide activities, services, processes, you know, interfaces and so on. But what is very important is the art of design thinking related to thought and integrating your thought within the systems, organizations and environments. So, so acting as a facilitator, acting as a connector, acting as a trigger, uh, for uh, changing uh, the, the way people face problems within the organizations. And um, we, we can see even the importance and the, uh, the rays of design within the organization, um, thanks uh, to different measures, uh, uh, different ways of uh, measurement of, of design within the organization. This is a famous uh, Danish design ladder coming from the Danish Design Council in 2003. This is an extension of this idea coming from a friend of mine from, from uh, uh, Sydney, San Bucolo, uh, where, you know, design is also um, uh, a tool uh, uh, to um, to be uh, uh, a trigger of transformation in organizations and community, or maybe uh, going um, to consider, let's say, the macro the macro system uh, a national competitive strategy. So you can you can understand you can see with these two slides the importance of design. The main, main so you have many subjects today. Uh, where design uh, uh, can, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, apply uh, their, their capabilities and, and so on. So, we, with our research, so we um, try to understand the, the, the reason why organizations adopt design thinking. And, you know, there are too many, too many reasons. The first one is about, uh, uh, is a, it's a key word, you know, that you know, because when we talk about design, we are talking about innovation. So the idea that design thinking is a mean to facilitate innovation and specifically what we call disruptive innovation. So not the incremental innovations that you can add to products and services, but really disruptive and breakthrough innovations. Then, uh, the possibility to use the same thinking in order to uh, um, avoid or overcome the uh, resistance to change that you usually find within the organizations. Uh, so with the possibility to change the mindsets of people and their perspective, to change the behaviors, you know, to, to make behaviors different, um, and to, to, to involve and engage uh, people. Then, design thinking also related to the user experience and you know, the possibility to understand the way people make sense of products and services. And this is, uh, uh, as a consequence, so you can improve the experiences for customers. The possibility of use the design thinking as a way to foster internal teamwork and even uh, create uh, a link among the silos that you find within the organization. So you, you usually you have, uh, you know, silos, uh, you have departments where you find people, uh, you know, speaking their own jargons um, with some specific behaviors. Uh, they, they are not able to communicate each other. Then design thinking in order to maintain and attract talents and so we will uh, see later why. And then uh, the possibility to uh, um, adopt, uh, uh, let's say a synonym of design thinking is a system thinking approach. So uh, understanding uh, what are the implications of every design uh, activity and uh, understanding even how uh, the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the action, the activities you do within the organization could change in a systemic way, you know, the, 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 the organization itself. In the Observatory of Design Thinking for Business, uh, we, uh, we did a map about uh, four different interpre interpretations of design thinking. Um, let's say referring to Anglo-Saxon driven literature, because maybe we can find some other references uh, in uh, uh, national uh, literature, let's say uh, Italian uh, literature of design, uh, you, can, you can find some uh, references uh, to what we call cultura del progetto, so design culture, 
and so the way the way designers think and so on but this is related to what we can find in the uh, international literature uh, you know the first interpretation is what we call creative problem solving and this is uh, the way americans and specifically uh, IDO, that's a design group coming from Palo Alto in California, they proposed a few years ago. There was a very, uh, you know, fundamental, fundamental, fundamental uh, paper uh, written by Tim Brown, the former CEO of IDO, uh, IDO for Harvard Business Magazine, uh, a few years ago in 2008 about design thinking, explaining to the world what is design design thinking so the idea is you know starting with an empathic approach understanding the users uh, uh, you know um, finding the gaps and user sacrifice uh, then um, you know creating uh, interdisciplinary um, teams uh, and dis discussing about these gaps and so prototyping ideas as soon as possible in order to test and to uh, assess the quality of a new idea and so on. Now, this is what we call uh, design thinking 1.0. So that's the first expression of design thinking. Then another expression very close to the, the first one of design thinking is uh, what we call sprint execution uh, coming from uh, the uh, ICT world uh, re related to software engineers, uh, uh, people that uh, have to develop in a very short time uh, uh, new algorithms and new softwares and new applications and so on. Spin so execution is quite similar to the creative problem solving, but you start uh, from the internal side, not just of serving the people outside, the people that will use new, new products or services, but you start with your own competen competencies and skills. And what you do is uh, is, is prototype is prototyping, you no? Know? So you develop in a very short time prototypes. You test these prototypes, and then you can create a new products, uh, new, new meaningful products and services. And you know, uh, in sprint ex execution, usually you have five day uh, phases, you know. So where you start with the idea, you test, you you create a prototype, you test with users, uh, potential users. Uh, the idea and then you start uh, the uh, development uh, uh, and the executions of the, this idea critical confidence is what we will discuss today and then you have innovation of meaning innovation of meaning is related to the work of uh, roberto verganti who is a scholar of polytechnic in milano um, he's with me in the scientific committee of the observatory of design thinking for business where um, he stress the idea of uh, meaning, so the um, sense-making approach of design, finding new meanings specifically to uh, existing or new technology. You know that there are too many uh, available technologies today, but the problem is finding the right meaning for this technology. And then we have creative confidence, uh, where the users are internal users, the employees. So the possibility to, to choose some of them Maybe the champions, the people really uh, closer to the vision uh, uh, of the company, to involve them in order to co-design some specific solutions, uh, in order to engage them, so to make them more productive, uh, more uh, proactive, so able to support uh, change uh, within the organization. Uh, you know, here you can see the critical confidence principles and practice. The aim is nurture. Uh, mindsets uh, thinking is about you know the idea of engaging direction is co-design co-develop so uh, working together with the uh, with the with employees in order to find some specific uh, solution to create let's say um, events uh, workshop uh, um, even to design places we'll see later um, in order to engage people um, uh, you know these are the hypotheses and also where we started from. Uh, the idea um, is that uh, uh, design thinking uh, is, uh, you know, a user-centered approach, but in this case, the users are the uh, internal employees. And the idea is how to use uh, design thinking in order to improve uh, the well-being uh, of these employees make them you know 
close to the uh, values uh, and to the vision mission of the company uh, to adhere to innovation programs and initiatives and you know if you engage people they uh, like to stay within that organization so this this is a way to maintain talents and even to attract talents and then there is another very interesting thing design thinking is not just tools and methods so mm, it's not enough uh, using you not know, for a, a determined time uh, the the tools and the methodologies uh, in order to uh, grow up to to raise design thinking within the organization um, you need to create let's say um, a creative culture within the organization no? and and what does it mean uh, as you we, we have discussed before so you can accept uh, change uh, easier uh, you can take risks and and then uh, uh, maybe you can contribute to, to the uh, development of the company, the development of the organization. No? And so um, the idea is creating uh, a design thinking culture or what we call a creative confidence within the organization. So the problem is uh, we want to create a design culture. No? So not just providing tools, not just providing methodologies, but creating a mindset. No? Uh, related to design thinking, but how to do it? You know? mm, how to absorb uh, this design culture within the organization? Well, let, let's start with these premises, you know, coming from some scholars uh, uh, describing uh, the uh, the main cultures that you find within the within a company, within an enterprise, within a uh, an organization uh, like a company. Uh, the, the, the most important, uh, you know, uh, the most important uh, uh, cultures uh, that you find within the organization are three. You have a, a kind, an organizational culture. So the way you can manage uh, resources, uh, the way you can manage, uh, uh, you know, humans, uh, human resources, uh, uh, um, you know, fundings, uh, and so on. Then the economical one that's related to some financial uh, um, issues, and then the technological ones. You have these three different uh, cultures within the organization. Then you have some other um, complementary. Uh, cultures, uh, you know, collaborating with the organizational culture, with the economical culture, with the technological culture, and design culture is one of these uh, complementary culture and uh, so service. So it, it provides uh, services to the organizational one. No? So when design uh, starts a collaboration with uh, decision makers in order to decide which are the right products or services uh, to be developed um, you know uh, most of time we we, we have a, a relation a, a relation between the design culture with the technological culture no? so usually designers they work with the uh, r and d uh, and technical department you know so but anyway uh, the design culture is a, a complementary culture so and uh, start a dialogue with the three main uh, cultures that you find within the organization uh, but let's go on so what are what is the design culture what are the characteristics of design culture so we have seen some of some of these characteristics before when we discussed about design thinking and the, the aims of design thinking within the organization so the first one is about Empathy, you know, uh, adopting an empathic uh, uh, approach. So, um, you know, you need to put yourself in the shoes of your users in order to understand uh, the feelings, uh, the way uh, your uh, your user, uh, um, you know, interpret uh, the messages that you embody in your products or services, the, the, the way the user makes sense. So, uh, what are the gaps, the sacrifices, uh, you know, of the users? So when the users uh, uh, 
you know interact with uh, with the, with the offer of the company then action with intention so th there is always a purpose in design activity you know so and so there is always an intention when you do a specific uh, uh, project um, another very interesting thing of the design culture and let's say of the design thinking approach is the acceptance of bias you know so considering bias as a, a component of the uh, design mindset design aptitude and sometimes feeding uh, the, the 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 process of uh, developing new products uh, uh, or feeding heuristics uh, uh, related to this process uh, with bias you know then experimentation um and maybe you can you have the po if you have the possibility to read a very interesting book called uh, uh, the reflective practitioner by donna schoen uh, donna schoen did a very interesting analysis about the way designers uh, think and act and there is a, st a strict link between uh, the hands and the mind, no? Uh, there is a, a strong link. Uh, you, you, you must uh, uh, check what, what you have in your mind and doing prototypes and so on. Then, uh, negotiation and teamwork skills. So we used to work uh, uh, within groups today. When you face complex problems, uh, you need to integrate different competencies. Um, Henry Dreyfus, a very important uh, uh, designer in the United States, uh, um, working in, from 30s to 70s, uh, uh, last century, uh, he used to say that you know designers that, uh, they have to be uh, you know polyglots. They need to uh, speak many many languages. Uh, they need. To, they have to understand how to interact with the with engineers, uh, with technicians, but even with people from the financial department, uh, with marketing people, uh, with psychologists, or with sociologists. So they have to know a little bit about different languages. And you know? this is the reason why they have to be polyglot or um, the same uh, designer, Dreyfus. Uh, he used to say uh, the, 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 the main uh, uh, quality of designers is diplomacy, diplomacy, so the possibility to uh, interact with, with everyone. So, and then holistic dimension, attention to, the, to details. So this, this is another interesting uh, quality of design culture. Um, I understood very, very well this interacting with my colleagues from management engineering uh, because they, they, they told me, okay, you are a little bit different with your thinking and you know, with your mindset so when you face problems because you don't focus, you don't, you don't use just a pair of lenses, but you use a kind of circularity thinking approach. Uh, going to the up level to the, the 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 lower level in a kind of zoom in zoom out approach that's typical of design thinking and it's a, one of the most important quality of design culture. Then intellectual vision. This is typical of Italian design. No? Design is not a design. Designers are not technicians in Italy. They are intellectual people. They want to express their vision of life, their vision of technology. Um, the, 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 the way of creating well-being situation, uh, systemic view, mm, this is typical, and then uh, another very important thing is the critical anticipation of the future. You know that a synonym of design is project, project. and project uh, came from a Latin word, progetto, 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 uh, that means uh, to throw forward, you know? so and there is a natural tension in design toward the future, you know? and these are all characteristics of design culture. So, how to create this design culture within the organization? Let's go on in order to explore this possibility. Uh, design culture uh, is related uh, is related to uh, do doing, you know? so to do things. You know? So, you need to assume a kind of mindset of do something and do it as soon as possible not then then this uh, relation between 
uh, the hands and the mind, no? let's say, this idea of reflective partitioning, no? as uh, uh, Donation stated in his book. Then, uh, mm, design culture, mm, you, you must create uh, this design culture uh, through small steps. No? Um, it, it's difficult to acquire uh, in, in, in a wild design culture. You must do experiences, uh, uh, you must, uh, you know, uh, exercise uh, your creative muscles, let's say. You know? And, and uh, this is a, a suggestion coming from Teresa Mabile. She's a psychologist teaching in uh, Harvard Business School. To, to managers, the importance of creativity, the importance of soft skills uh, to support uh, decision-making processes. And so the idea of uh, Teresa Mabile is uh, um, you can create uh, design culture uh, related to uh, specific creative confidence uh, if you experiment micro successes. Uh, so maybe learning from video games, you know, you, you have in video uh, games different levels, uh, levels and you, you need to, to, to reach, uh, you know, the lower ones and then you can go up, you know. And, and one very important thing is that you can create uh, uh, your design culture if you collaborate uh, uh, with, with other people. The creativity is about collaboration. It, and please forget the idea that uh, you have the uh, the, the design the designer star working alone without any in, in, any interaction with uh, with the, with other components of the organization. Um, another very important thing is about the prototyping. No? So Dim or Die was uh, one of the uh, you know the, 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 a mantra uh, coming from Nicolas Negropont who was the uh, former. Uh, and founder of MIT Media Lab. Uh, so the possibility to make uh, visible uh, what's in your mind. So thanks to prototyping processes. And also the idea is uh, uh, developing prototypes in a very quickly way. And so maybe at a low co cost. So um, if you are interested, uh, Alberto Saviola who is an engineer working with Google uh, edited a book called Prototyping, so exploring possibilities to um, uh, visualize uh, new applications, uh, uh, but you know, just uh, showing the, the features of these new applications and not developing pre series, you know, uh, exploring possibilities thanks to the technology and so on. Um, so, but we need to understand where we can put together business culture and design culture and uh, how to make them overlapping, how to make them, you know, uh, uh, linking together and so on. So our idea was to, to use a model coming from uh, uh, an expert in organization, uh, um, Edward Shea. Uh, he, he wrote a very interesting book called Organizational Culture and Leadership. Uh, this, uh, distinguishing these uh, three different uh, la levels uh, related to the uh, corporate cultural expressions uh, coming from the visible side to the invisible one. Uh, you can express the, the corporate culture thanks to visible artifacts. Uh, let, let's think about you know the dress code or the office furniture, so the furniture, the facilities, the way you design and lay out the workspaces and so on. Um, so what you, we say, what you see and hear when, when we go, when you go visit uh, a, a company or when you go visit an institution like Yade, let's say, then you have some exposed values that are the values, the goals, the philosophies of the company. So you can find here if, if we find here design, product design, interior design, we can find here information and communication design uh, in order to um, create what we call the culture theater, no? so where you can feel the, uh, and you can see uh, the, uh, the, these, uh, these, uh, these values. You know? So I don't know, um, if you visit some Japanese corporations, uh, uh, you find the payoff of the company, 
uh, everywhere you go with, in, in the in the headquarters, you, you take the elevator, and in, in the elevator you find the the, the, the small uh, um, uh, you know painting with the, with with the expressed the values of the company. That's a way not to be exposed to the values of the company. Then you have invisible ans assumptions, so the perception, the beliefs, the thoughts, the feelings. No, so. Um, there are tacit, tacit uh, assumptions. They are related, let's say, often to the leadership style. Also, in this case, if you want, design could um, give a contribution. Once again, maybe using communication, uh, using narratives, uh, so supporting the design maker, the, the decision makers, in order to create the right narratives within the organization. So. This is the corporate culture. So, and then we can we can find a reference, you know, with design. Um, there are some uh, components of the employee experience, and I told you that um, when we talk about creative confidence, the idea is starting from the observation of the uh, internal users of a, of the organization. I mean, the employees. Then uh, you can have uh, these this components uh, as uh, stated by IBM, uh, the community, the environment and the activities. And then in the intersection, you can find the platforms between communities and activities, maybe web platforms or, you know, even physical platforms where some activities uh, happen. In activities and environment, you have tools, community and the environment, you find the workspace. And then maybe we can find an overlapping between uh, the employee experience and the uh, corporate culture expressions as stated by uh, Edgar Schein. Let, let's go on in the, this, uh, um, in this um, in hypothesis. You know? so, uh, we we uh, we say that you know uh, the corporate culture, the business culture, is expressed with these three different uh, uh, components: artifacts. You no, know? the artifacts are visible. What a specific artifact? So the way you lay out the environment, the image of the architecture, uh, the the way you uh, create the the workspace. Um, there are some implications. You know, this is um, the Learning Innovation Center of Steel Case in Munich. You can see here the work cafe. The work cafe is um, uh, an hybrid space where you can find people coming from other departments, uh, and this is a way to uh, nourish what we call the weak ties within the organization. You know, um, scholars and literature says that uh, if you create conditions in order to uh, support weak ties, uh, you can, uh, mm, you know, empower innovation processes. So, uh, the way you lay out, the way you furnish, the, you, the way you design the uh, the interiors of this uh, of this uh, uh, offices is very important to 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 support uh, design culture. Let's say, yeah, here you can see the the role of workplace for design culture, and this is a, a matrix coming from uh, the research of steel case. Steel case is one of the most important uh, furniture companies in the world you know, for uh, uh, offices uh, and for for for, for uh, workplaces. Uh, and you can see uh, the, the, the possibility to uh, interpret uh, the different needs of employees within the organization. So when you can share places or you own places and when you are alone and when you are interacting with other people, uh, in a way proposing a kind of palimpsest of possibilities. So and providing different spaces and also um, not the traditional desk where you go every day and you stay in the same place, but the possibility to change uh, places within the organization, within within the, the office, uh, following the tasks you have to do. So you want to stay concentrated, maybe you can have just a, 
uh, a very uh, um, comfortable armchair, no? so with big walls, big back, uh, uh, um, made by uh, fabric uh, with acoustic uh, performances to be isolated. No? Or if you want to start uh, you know, a conversation with just a person, one person, you can stay in a small room, no? so with a mm, familiar, uh, with, with a, you know, uh, all house-like or domestic-like um, uh, look. No? So we can, we can uh, consider all these, uh, these characteristics in order to improve the well-being of people no? and so to uh, act in a positive manner no? when they uh, do their work. This is, um, you know, an, an example coming from uh, the work of a, uh, um, a design firm here in Milan called uh, uh, Continuum. Continuum uh, is a big design firm coming from the United States. Uh, the headquarters is in Boston, uh, but they founded this, uh, this branch here in Milan. Later on, EPAM. EPAM is a digital company, uh, Bo Continuum. This is a, a trend today. You know, there are some digital companies or um, a, a strategic consultancy company uh, buying uh, design firms. And so they were uh, invited to design uh, the new space, uh, the new offices of Prometheia is a, another consulting company. So, you know, you can see here the the keywords and to, to design uh, a different place compared with the traditional ones, the traditional offices, in order to engage people. Huh? So uh, you can see some of the um, issues that they, they face when they design uh, this uh, this new workplace. No, there is more than one way of working, so the possibility to create a palimpsest. No, and you know if the company uh, this is related to uh, the, the the business culture. No, so the artifacts and the visibility of the artifacts, the way you can propose uh, different solutions uh, and you no know, options. Let's say to the to the employees. And then the possibility to, uh, let's say, uh, leave the traditional way of facing problems uh, using visualization and providing kits uh, and ways of solving uh, problems uh, differently. No? Maybe with gamification, you know that uh, Professor Rui knows very well this approach. Um, then the, you know, discussing about change management or creating situation uh, in order to to uh, adopt uh, change as uh, an, you know a, a very uh, usual way you not know, to, to to face problem and then uh, you know the idea of creating the dress code let's say you know the informality the uh, as a key element of the dna of this company then we have the exposed values you no know? so and you know uh, when we uh, when we want to know the characteristics of a company, uh, what we, what we see, the vision, the mission, the values, you know? so and this, that's the way you not know, to to um, show their uh, identities, you know? so, and communication, information, design, they are very in, important uh, in this task. You know? and so this is just an example coming from Lago. Lago is a furniture company from Italy, a famous and successful um, furniture company. And they propose no, not not the traditional way of showing the values of the company, but a manifesto, no? a way even to engage the, the end users. Uh, but you know, you can you can create uh, some specific tools in order to uh, transfer these uh, 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 these exposed values, you know, like uh, the welcome kit uh, that usually Ogilvy and Mother uh, they. Gave, they give to the uh, new hires when they, when they come within the organization. And, uh, you know, there is a kind of manifesto, but there is a kit, you know, so something visible, tangible, you know, that expresses the characteristics of the company. And, you know, the, these are the traditional ways of you know, so, uh, expressing the values and so on. Or, uh, you know, this is uh, Illy Cafe. Uh, Illy is a, a, a famous... Uh, um, coffee um, coffee maker company from Italy, no? So and this is the showroom of this company in in Trieste, where you when you go there you you 
Well, this is um, you are exposed no, to the mission, vision, and values of this company. No, and that's that's very very important. And then you know uh, even uh, applications, the ICT supporting uh, the uh, diffusion and the spread of these exposed values is very important. And then you have the uh, you know the uh, let's say implicit uh, uh, values you know, related to the co company, uh, to the organization, to the culture of the organization, what we call the hidden curriculum. You know? So they are invisible, but you know, even uh, so we, we, can, we can support uh, as designers and design thinkers uh, the, uh, the, 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 the possibility to make, uh, to create uh, an engaging you know, hidden, hidden curriculum. You know? So maybe proposing events or collaborating with managers, visionary managers, in order to create some specific activities, you know, so um, to create a sense of belonging. You know? and, uh, once I, I asked, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the person in charge of human resources of a digital company, how they measure, you not know, the uh, the sense of belonging, and uh, he said that that's very dif difficult uh, to to measure this. But they they create a lot of uh, uh, um, external events, and you can understand the sense of belongings uh, uh, and even the, the well-being of employees in re in relation with the, with the company, uh, depending on the participation of this uh, this employee in this uh, this uh, this event. This is an event, for instance, coming from. Uh, a bank from from Italy in Tesa San Paolo, where the managers were invited to uh, beautify, also to design, to draw, uh, in collaboration with some uh, writers, uh, the the space of a stairs, um, you know, very ugly uh, space, collaborating together, but you know. Uh, staying an anonymous, so, so without expressing, and this is creativity, creativity. But you know, the idea of creativity, you can express creativity if you stay, let's say, an anonymous. So if you put a mask, you know, everyone, uh, everyone was born creative. But you know, with the education, we we destroy this creativity. You know, so and creativity is a way. To engage people, no? when people they could express their creativity, they become more engaged, no? so and they improve the productivity of the company. No? So um, here you can see even uh, what what happens when uh, uh, you have uh, uh, employees' perception and company's post values uh, if they are not uh, aligned, no and. Because maybe you can say, okay, uh, this company has has got some that specific values, but the perceived ones are not the same. So even the let's say the role of design is uh, creating a kind of values alignment between these exposed and perceived hidden uh, values, and how to do it? So one of the you know uh, main uh, task of Strategic designers, so when they come into the company, uh, uh, is is making the right questions. Is a questioning time, no? So because thanks to the questions, you can understand if there is a, a misalignment between these exposed and perceived values. And then uh, I told you before, you know, the hidden values are related to the role of uh, leadership, you uh, know, and so the possibility for leadership uh, to inspire, to facilitate the relationship, uh, to create. Uh, the sense of stay together and then you know act together in order to um, get a specific purpose and even the idea of using a kind of um, uh, nudge. You know? Uh, you know there are there are many uh, many examples. Uh, anyway, you know what what about design? uh maybe design can support uh, with uh, with their capabilities uh, visionary uh, with leaders with the and then uh you know what happens usually within the companies that they want to uh, dedicate uh, um, room to uh, creativity creative confidence so they they live free 
their employees uh, to explore possibilities for the company. You know, um, you know that was a research coming coming from Harvard, uh, asking employees about what they have and not don't have at the work. You 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 can see the regular time for creative strategic thinking is the most important request coming from these employees. This is the reason why, for instance, there are some policies within organizations, big organizations like Google. You know that Google leave 20% of the time of, of um, employees free in order to uh, uh, explore possibilities, new possibilities. Uh, uh, 3M, they leave 15%. We are working with a, uh, with a company, a bank uh, company, uh, and they uh, created a new program called uh, Up, Unlock Your Potential. No? So they live for free. Uh, they leave free time to the employees in order to explore possibilities. And then you can find some other. Uh, so let's go, let's go on. Uh, you can see here what are the design thinking principles and what are the design thinking action. Uh, who are the, the, the people involved, what are the uh, situation and why they have to be involved in the skills and capabilities. Uh, we did our research and we have found a lot of links, links among all these different uh, uh, dimensions within the organization. Um, and then let's, let's, uh, let's conclude this presentation about you know, so what did we learn from the lockdown? Um, you know, uh, it was a very strong accelerator no? so of experiences uh, COVID-19. So uh, we found a different way of working. Uh, no? So we stay stayed at home, at home and so on. And here you can see uh, a, a frame coming from a movie by Jacques Tati, uh, Playtime, where you know there is uh, there is uh, the the protagonist uh, looking at the the, the way people. Uh, uh, work in in a 50 uh, 50s um, uh, office uh, what you can see is that there is a control a total control of of the people uh, if you want to um, uh, spread creative confidence within the organizations you must leave control uh, you, you must uh, provide so you maybe you, you need to create some purpose uh, oriented communities so and leaving the idea of a panopticon no, that was typical of the organizations in in the last century no? so um, you know uh, if you work uh, uh, with your own times uh, so organizing yourself in a different way you have the possibility to increase your productivity so we have, we have discovered this with the uh, with the with the pandemic, you know, and uh, what what we have lost is the socialization uh, and the fact that there is no distinction between work and private life, and also the fact that I told you before that we have we have uh, lost uh, the weak ties, not so that are at the center of every design, uh, every in, in creative activity, every design every innovative activity weak ties means that you 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 found let's say with a serendipity uh, in a serendipity situation so people coming from a different uh, different departments so you start to discuss about possibilities together and so on uh, and you know uh, the, the there are some companies like Microsoft that they use a lot of creativity in supporting uh, people working uh, remotely and um, creating occasions uh, uh, to uh, spread their corporate cultures thanks to new artifacts and 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 so on. And so maybe we need to analyze and understand better what are these tools in order to. Uh, improve you not know, the, uh, the the engagement of people um, uh, you know uh, I told you before about the importance of some uh, uh, places you know? so the, the visible the visible 
uh, expressions of the corporate cultures, um, work cafe, uh, and uh, you know smart places where you can find people, uh, you can start interaction uh, uh, with with, uh, with 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 other people, uh, and so we, we we can discover let's say socialization with with, with other people. No? So the idea of creating uh, spaces where you can um, uh, hybrid spaces, let's say, uh, because you can you can create even some situations uh, where you can interact remotely, but you can have people in presence, and so, so that that would be a very interesting challenge for the next future. Anyway, the, here you can find um, the essential bi bibliography about this idea of creative confidence, uh, design thinking, and creative confidence crossing. Uh, the corporate culture within the organization. And uh, I really hope uh, that you enjoy this, uh, this, this presentation. And uh, now it's time maybe to, to, in, to stop the, the sharing and asking you if you have some questions, if you want to interact with me and, and so on. Yes. It's fantastic the way that uh, you presented uh, the creative confidence concept that is something that is really intriguing us because uh, it is really out there, but uh, most of the people have no clue about uh, the impact. So I have a lot of questions for you, but this is not my turn. I need to hand over this to the students and maybe now we can stop the recording and start the, the Q&A session.